This is my personal copy of the Quran. It's in English. You can have this as a gift. No, no, no. It's a gift to you. Hijacking. Why? For themselves. You can, you can get. There's a whole bunch of them over there as well. But I'd like to gift it to you. Take a gift. This was very like good for me and everything. And this was, I think, the best explanations. Kind of. I hope so. You know, like it's. I feel like there's it's man made, and there's too many religions, and yeah, that's like one of the. Okay, so again, yeah, again, that would undermine religion, but not the general idea of God. These are two different things. You see. Okay, yeah. So, why would you subscribe to atheism and not agnosticism or theism of some sort? It's kind of like I'm atheist, but at the same time I'm agnostic. Like it's it's a bit of a mix of so, both. Like I know that it's not one of the out of the four thousand religions, it's none of the four thousand religions. But it is it is something like that no one knows, no human being knows. Okay, like, in that case, you would still not be an atheist. I what mean, atheism means that like that you don't believe in like God. So like I the, the idea of God. I don't believe in it. Okay, but like, good. It could be anything. Okay, like, so so, so like, let's start there. Really, let's know. start there. Yeah. Before we look into whether religion is true or not, whether Islam is true or not, or certain injunctions in Islam are fair or not, we start off right at the top. If there's a God, how do you think this universe came about? This world came about? I think it's a tough question, but like it's probability as well because. The universe is like the, there's millions and millions and millions and millions of galaxies. Obviously, one of these galaxies would have the right conditions to like sustain life. We aren't the only living organisms on Earth. Like there's definitely more life outside of Earth, and we're just lucky enough like to add, like this this area has the conditions for it to be you know. Yeah. So essentially, life. what you're saying is we shouldn't be surprised to be alive because we are alive there and we, we are surprised because we're alive they, there is bound to be some part of the universe or maybe there's multiple universes and one of them has life-sustaining properties of course. essentially this is known as the anthropic principle okay. right yeah that in no way shape or form argues for atheism okay okay yeah. so okay. the point that you made is not a, your point is a point of say acknowledging our existence yeah. it's not a point which steers one towards atheism okay but do you, do you believe that other life got the Islam, Islam as well on and the so there's two two different two different that, things here like if i say, even if i wasn't muslim yeah. i would still believe there would be there's life in other parts of the universe but because i'm muslim i also do believe there's life in other parts of the universe yeah see, yeah so you so, see what i'm saying like no no that, I, like so look let, let me just wouldn't get the quran too like another being another planet wouldn't have okay so quran. again again let's go back to this point yeah. we are only talking about god's existence for now and then we will go into why didn't the aliens get the quran or why is it that um, people born in India are most likely to be Hindu. People born in, say, yeah, okay. China are most... We can get to that later. Yeah. Just the existence of God. Yeah, just existence. Let's look at what we agree about existence right now. The world, li biological living systems that we are, and the way that we experience consciousness, okay. and the way that there is design all around us. Yeah. How would you explain this design? I would explain it through God. How would you explain it? I can't like, as in like, the only difference between us and animals is our intelligence and our consciousness. And the, our consciousness gives us like this ego that like our life is more important and we are more superior than other life forms. You know, so we in well in reality we're not more important than other animals as well. We are all like breathing the same life, right? Like as in like one life. And the only reason that we think there is a god and we think we're special or there has to be an importance is because of our consciousness and like, okay so it's, firstly I disagree with you animals do have consciousness okay. animals also have intelligence but they don't have they don't have intelligence as like like obviously as us. our but intelligence like, is at a higher it. cognitive level I agree yeah. with that but there's a gradient of intelligence that you can see a sort of uh, trajectory with animals right yeah. uh, organisms like us even ants have very complex social structures how does any of this point towards atheism though it doesn't it points that it's not like with, it's not like in terms of like the, that we we created the idea of God. Like, do you think that animals believe in God or like they have something like that? It's because of our intelligence that we think okay. that we're more important and that 
we need meaning. That's the point of like. Okay, so what what you what you're pointing towards is a a motivation someone has to to argue for God. But I'm not talking about the motivation because someone may have a motivation. I don't want to live my life in a way that's restricted. Therefore, I don't want to believe in God. Oh, okay. So you just want to know like. I just want to stick to facts. Okay. So say something like the human brain, right? The human brain, in terms of its anatomy, in terms of its function, in terms of memory recalling, and let's say even the DNA that we actually have that creates the brain. All of these things are more sophisticated than any computer code in the world. So it couldn't be like probability that it just happened like randomly. Like okay, if somebody, planned, yeah, it, okay, if somebody was to say that, yeah. then they would need to justify. Because probabilities aren't just abstract. You have to justify what is the probability based on. Now we have two scenarios in front of us. In your life, are you going to take a scenario that's more probable or less probable? The way that you operate, more probable. Okay. So there's two scenarios here. Human life was designed. Human life was not designed. There's only two scenarios. Which is more probable? Not like it's not designed. Like as in, like it was just probability, just randomly. As in, it was just um, we naturally, we naturally. Uh, uh, well, not just evolution, but naturalistic like, interpretation I don't of evolution. The Adam and Eve thing, if, you, if that's what you're saying. That, like, no, the you see, Ad, you see, you see, Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve comes much got, later. Got and then, so, because that's what it says in like okay. Kyle, right? In so, Quran, so let, let's stick, from all let's from stick to Darwin's perspective, just for the sake yeah. of argument. So, Darwin believed that there was an initial cell, and all life came through that cell. And when he published his theory in 1858 at the Royal Society, before he published his book. He believed in God, and even when he died, he was not an atheist. He was never an atheist. Yeah. So you can you what can actually. Did he, believe in that? he was initially a Christian, then he became a deist. A deist is someone who believes in God but doesn't believe in religion. So by the time he published his book, he was a deist. He's no longer a Christian. Later on in life, he became an agnostic, but he was never an atheist. The interesting thing is, when he did publish the Origin of Species, he believed in God. And throughout his life, he kept correspondence with other theists like Asa Gray, who is also a biologist. So there's nothing inherent in evolutionary theory that will lead you to atheism. Uh, everything that discuss, like evolution goes against the Adam and Eve story, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. Everything he studied and researched but goes that, completely against Yeah, but that. Remember, remember I said we're going to take one step at a time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it doesn't go against God. Okay, the idea of God. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Unless, unless someone comes up with a naturalistic. Okay. So who made God then? Okay. In general, like okay. God is uncreated. He was just there. God is uncreated. Now let me just explain something about this. When we look at life, we can infer there's a designer. Now someone may say, where did the designer come from? There's two answers to this. The designer was uncreated, or the designer was created. Either way, the inference from design to designer is unfazed by the question who designed the designer. Do you understand the logic here? A little bit, yeah. Okay, so let me just go slowly. We have DNA. DNA, we infer from DNA, which is irreducibly complex, which is specified course, complexity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We infer from this, there is a designer. Now someone says, this designer, was this designer eternal or temporal? The answer to the attribute of the designer is irrelevant to this inference. The okay, inference yeah, takes yeah, you yeah. to a designer. Okay. So far, do you agree that behind the design of life, I, I there is like a designer? There is some, like some, like obviously, there's like trillions and trillions of like functions, like in a human body, that will make us like the way we are. So yes, possibly, but I lean towards like no because of how. Grand everything is like in terms of galaxies and universe and like in general like it could be more like it's like oh, so a 50 50. okay yeah. okay you're saying 50 50. i would not say it's 50 50. i would say purely objectively prob purely by probabilities it's going to be 99.999 percent and something very very low on the other side okay let's just look at one small thing when you're looking around in this park right do you ever get this headache and this sign in front of you that your memory is full you don't when you do that with a mobile phone does that happen yes yeah. right it does happen okay can you remember where you went where you first went to school yes okay how many years ago was that like um 
23, 22 years. Like okay, do you remember the classroom you were in? A little bit. Okay. It's fuzzy, yeah. So this human mind, which is scanning and recording everything, is more sophisticated than any technology that humans have come up with. It's so complex that the biologist who discovered the structure of DNA, Francis Crick, he was an atheist and he couldn't explain this complexity that he saw, so he said it might have come from aliens. This is in his book, Life Itself. That's how complicated life yeah. is. Yeah. We are using the same inference that he's using for aliens to say, no, let's not say aliens, let's just say a designer for now. We're not even saying God, we're just saying a designer, okay. right? Yeah. That inference will then open up for us other avenues that we can look into. Like who is, did it? Yeah, yeah like who did it? Is there a religion? And then when we look into religions, why is Islam true? Because I think, Ahmed, you, you sound like a very sincere person. My advice to you is separate the question of God and religion. First, come to a conclusion whether there is a God or not. Then look into what religion is right or what religion Which is actually is wrong. Right yeah. Wrong. yeah. So let's just stick yeah. to God. Okay. Yeah. What other objections do you have to God's existence? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, let me just speak to him, please, yeah. first. Yeah. God, we see uh, there, yeah. there is God exists. I think the, like the, what's it called, how everything is like, everything is like built to kill you in terms of survival. If we didn't have houses, if we didn't like fend for ourselves, it's all so cruel. As in even the things that are happening in Palestine, let's say, even like, you know how you, people say that God has a plan for everyone. So let's say there's a little girl that got like, let's say, I know it's a bit like harsh, like let's say she was raped by like four or five guys. And stuff like, what was her like path? What was her plan? You know, like it's all a bit like so cruel. And like, if we didn't like fend for ourselves and made all this for ourselves, everything would kill us. There is like, there is no miracle things that is like saving. It's all us. We're making it happen. We're like surviving. We're the ones doing it. So everything is like cruel. Okay. If that, if that makes sense. There's a lot of cruel. It's as if cru there's no one there to like guide okay. us. Okay. You know, like, so help us out. what's the alternative? The alternative of that. Life being a cosmic disco party, everyone's happy, everyone lives forever, no one's sick, no one rapes each other, no one kills each other. Well, as in like there'd be rules, like there'd be like, yeah, not, okay. not something like that, something a bit of a balance of that. Like if, if something really cool is happening, like extreme is happening, maybe there would be an intervention. If, okay, if the God was sure, planning, sure. If the God so was when like we have these, actually, like, sure, yeah. when we have these, so you're, you're talking about, for example, what's happening in Palestine. When we have these people in Palestine, whose children have been killed, they're under rubble, they're starving, they're cold, they're going through all of this. They're still saying, I'm unto Billah, we believe in God. Their paradigm is not your paradigm. Their paradigm is that God did not create this world to be a cosmic disco party. Their paradigm is that God created this world for a testing ground and we are all being tested with good and evil. But what's their test? The girl that got, let's say a, a little girl gets raped by four guys, five guys, like in Pakistan or in Palestine. That is the test. Like, that is the multiple. test. That is the test for, in fact, not just her, the entire society. In the Quran, it mentions that women were being, girls were being buried alive because they, they were not favored by the pagans at the time. They were burying women alive. Yeah. And that That's crime really is something society is responsible for. Humans, so, yeah. so, yeah. So, look, the Quranic perspective is that evil and good exists in this world. It doesn't say evil doesn't exist. Yeah. It doesn't say you will not be tested. In fact, what we are taught is that the most beloved to God are tested even more. But the point I'm trying to point out, and this sounds really, really objective. I want you to think about this. Say we go down to the London Tower. I show you a medieval torture rack. Okay. Yeah. It's the way that they tortured people for, I don't know, throwing an Back apple the at the day, yeah. apple at the queen or something stupid like that. <laughs> Would you say that that medieval torture rack is not designed because it's doing a function that's evil? No, of course I'd say that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So just because something has an evil outcome does not undermine the idea of design. Design is irresistible as a conclusion. Design is still there. So then the wider questions are why is there suffering? Why is there pain? These questions, they need theological answers, but they don't undermine the idea of design. Now, have you read, uh, <coughs> have you read the story of Moses in uh, chapter 18 of the Quran? No, I, but I, I'm familiar with his story, like, but I'm not like, no. I'm so not Mus like Musa, we, we say Musa, right? Yes. The prophet Moses, he was traveling with this man whose name was Khidr. Do you, are you familiar with this story? No. <laughs> okay, so what happened was, 
Moses was being taught a lesson by God. So he met this figure called Al Khidr. Now, some people say Al Khidr was an angel or, you know, they have all these theories about him. So anyway, what we know is that they were traveling together. And when they were traveling together, some strange occurrences happened. And Moses was supposed to learn a lesson from Khidr. What Khidr said to him is, you will not be able to be patient with what you're going to see. So when they were traveling, they came across a group of people and they helped them cross a, a river. And this good group of people, Samaritans, or whatever type of people they were, friendly people, Khidr made a hole in the boat. He damaged the boat. And Moses said, why did you do that? And Khidr said, didn't I say to you, you're not supposed to question me. Then they went along. When they went along, another occurrence happened. The second one slipped my mind. It was, uh, they went to a town. A town, yes. They went to a town and in this town, and in the ancient times, when you go to a town, it's not like today everyone's ignoring you. There's a house you can stay in, you can be someone's guest. The Arabs had oh, this... Sorry, no, in between it was uh, the... The boy. Uh, boy. The, the boy. Okay. So there was a, a boy and Khidr killed him. Oh. An innocent boy, he killed him. And Moses said, why did, you kill an, why did you kill an innocent child? Then Khidr again said to him, didn't I tell you not to question me? Then they went to another place. And in this place, there was a town and the people rejected them. They didn't give them hospitality. And as they were walking out, this hostile town, there was a wall that was damaged and Khidr rebuilt the wall. He rebuilt it. So let's look back to the people of the boat who were good people, something bad happened. To the innocent child, something bad happened. To people that weren't good, something good was happening. So again, Moses said, well, if you wanted, you could have charged money for that. Like, why are you doing this for free? So Khidr said to him, this is where we basically end our uh, journey, right? This is where we end. Um, he's, he now is explaining to Moses what is the interpretation of, of these particular events that he couldn't yeah. be patient with. So he said to him, there was a king that was seizing all the good boats that were along this river. I damaged the boat. And obviously, if you damage it, they can repair it later. But the king is not going to seize it because it's not operational. So that's the first event. The second event was that that child was going to be tyrannical. That child was going to be raised up and do something evil. How, how, how would he know that? So again, this is, this is the story. So this is where Al-Khidr is not me or you. We can't go around doing stuff like this, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. This was a story. This is why some people say it was an angel. It was a story to show that when something evil happens, there may be something good behind it. And when it came to the townspeople, that area belonged to, orphans. the area that he uh, repaired belonged to some orphans oh, yeah. whose father was righteous and God intended that, that their treasure is not uncovered by the wall that had broken down. So Hither was doing something good to a people that was supposedly bad to help people that were good. Okay, yeah. So the Quranic paradigm is that behind evil, behind suffering there is a purpose there is a test there is a trial it is not as simple as because there's evil there's no god so islamic theology has an answer to these things and what i'd recommend you do take everything one step at a time your initial question your initial question was very interesting because this is something i used to think about when i was in my early 20s i used to think it's not fair it's not fair that someone born in Latin America in an Amazonian rainforest. They are born, they never hear of Islam, they die, they go to hellfire. I used to think that can't be right. That doesn't, that's not just. When I looked into Islamic theology, Islamic theology doesn't say somebody born in the Amazon who's never heard of Islam and they die, they go to hellfire. Islamic theology doesn't say that. Islamic theology says that you are questioned according to the knowledge that you have. So someone that has not received the message of Islam is not the same as someone that has received the message of Islam. These are two different things. Secondly, when it comes to there being many, many, many religions, I had the same question. Why are there so many religions? Now, there's two possibilities here. Because there's so many religions, they're all wrong. That's one possibility. Yeah, one is right. No, that, the no, no. The, 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 first, the first possibility is they're all wrong. Okay. Yeah. The second possibility is some of them are right. The third possibility is one of them is right. Okay, either one is right, all wrong. A few are right, the rest wrong or all wrong. The point that came to my mind is, if there is a true religion, then it has to be a religion that God has sent throughout mankind, throughout humanity. 
The religion of Islam has always existed on earth. Ancient Christianity, ancient Judaism, even ancient religions like Zoroastrianism and Hinduism, and even the Aztecs, the Mayans and the Incas, they all had monotheistic people coming and teaching them about the oneness of God. So the basic common denominator in all these religions is that they initially believed in one supreme God. And later on they deviated. And we find this in the Quran. We find that God sends a messenger to every nation. Do you know how many messengers there are? How many prophets there are? No, not the top of my head. Prophets, over 100,000. I think it's 125? I don't remember the exact number. But it's a huge number. Messengers, how many? It's supposed to be, again, an enormous number. So, God will never take someone to account if they haven't received the message. And he says, God, God promises in the Quran he's not unjust. He promises in the Quran he doesn't punish until he sends a messenger. And everyone's accountable for what they know. And those you that see, don't receive the message will be tested in the hereafter. Yeah, and people will be tested in the hereafter. So, the questions that you're asking, Ahmed, I think are brilliant questions, but they require patience. They don't require sound bites. You know these atheists, they come up with sound bites. Religion's irrational, too many religions, therefore they're all false. Yeah. It's more sophisticated than okay. that. And, okay, last question. Um, what are your thoughts on like atheism growing nowadays? Like, as in, like, it's, with, the, with the growth of technology, and with the growth of like actual like people like looking, having more access to different like news and all that, do you think that it has a like a link to it? Like that like people are like now realizing that you know, like, that there is no religion because like, they're getting smarter yeah. and this and that. Yeah, so this is the most common argument made by atheists. You find Richard Dawkins making this, Victor yeah. Stenger making this, Sam Harris, Neil deGrasse Tyson, they all say this. History shows us the opposite. Science is a venture which is 4,000 years old. Majority of the history of science, Muslims, Christians and others were involved who were theistic. Not atheistic. Atheists have come right at the fag end of the scientific enterprise and are claiming science is theirs. Even today, even today, the vast majority of scientists are people that you cannot say are atheistic. Even if they were, even if we were to make the argument, if the majority follow atheism, atheism's right, then the majority of the history of science were theists, so theism's right. Obviously, that's not a valid argument. Their argument is this. Religion is based upon a gap in human knowledge. The science, the torch of science is uh, making the darkness of ignorance disappear and therefore the room for God to disappear. But actually that's not what we believe. We believe science illuminates God's creation. Science teaches us, for example, that the genetic code is something far more sophisticated than anything Microsoft has developed. Scientists and yeah. But isn't the purpose of science to find new discoveries and keep finding out like the truth about the universe? But when Islam, Islam says that that's the, we have the final answer. This is how the universe is. No, it's, it's so two, two does, different things. Does, like, yeah. Yeah. So, like, Islam encourages science. Science is an explanation. How? It's like contradictory because Islam says that this is it. When does it say no, 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 like, no, okay. Is uh, like, go, so go, I, I, I'll, I'll explain to you. Certain things are categorical in Islam. There is a God, that's categorical. This is morality, that's categorical. Day of judgment is going to happen, that's categorical. How the universe was made? Should we pursue science? Should we look at astronomy and come up with explanations? S Islam promotes this. I recommend to you a book. Patricia Farah has written a book called Science of 4,000 Year History. She covers the Islamic, is, is, the Islamic sciences fr uh, in terms of why Muslims did science. And one of the things that she argues in that book is that the reasons why Muslims excelled in science is because their religious texts enforce in them inquiry to look into the cosmos. Because the Quran says, yeah, yeah. The Quran says, do you not see that how the camel is created? The Quran says, look into how we started creation, travel the earth. Do you not ponder about creation? So Islam doesn't say don't ponder. I'll give you a narration of the Prophet peace be upon him for you to understand. I'm paraphrasing, the Prophet taught us, reflect upon creation, do not reflect upon Allah. Okay, Meaning, yeah, okay. Allah is an entity which is so great, we can only understand very little things about Allah. But science and creation and these things, we can look into them. In fact, it's an Islamic duty to look into them. 
Have you heard of a man called Imam Ghazali? Imam Ghazali. He was an Islamic theologian going back, I think, about a thousand years ago. He believed it was a religious duty to do science. That's actually good to know because I didn't know that. That's yeah. been encouraged. It. It's often an atheist argument. Yeah, it's often an atheist argument that they go against science or they, they, they questions yeah. of science. Yeah, that's the main. And religion is against yeah. science, but yeah. usually it's worth concerning the West. A lot of it's inherited from Christianity. In the past, within the Christian religion, science and scientists were persecuted. But then they blame that, project that of all religion. Islamic history is very different with science. The relationship and is very they hide that Newton was a priest. Okay, I'll give you Newton one small piece of advice. Well, if you believe priest. in God, That's not religion, just God, to do then to find ask that, that God for guidance and yeah. research religion with an open heart, open heart. Yeah, and what I'll do, where's it gone? This is my personal copy of the Quran, it's in English. You can have this as a gift. No, 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 it's a gift to you. Hijacking. Why? You can, you can get, there's a whole bunch of them over there as well. But I'd like to gift it to you. Take a gift. This is very like, good for me and everything. And this is, I think, the best explanations kind of. I hope so. So thank you. Yeah. No worries. No worries. Uh, Have a nice day. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Open it randomly and then open it randomly. Yeah. Whenever you want. Yeah. And let go. Yeah. Cool. I will. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you guys Speak so much.